There's a number of innovations that have been released with the new Free Flight Mini app. So I thought that I would just go through those and check out what the interface looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and open Free Flight Mini here. And I've also got a drone ready to connect. So you can see it's going through this process of establishing a connection. And once it does that, it will check that out and, and go straight on to the next stage. So you can also have a look here at which drone it's going to try and connect to. So that's Shoemaps 10 because that's the one that it has previously connected to. So it recognizes that as a known drone. All right, so once that's connected, we can go ahead and either connect a fly pad, which we're not going to do today, but I'm just going to press on the fly button here. So this takes us immediately to the interface. So if you were familiar with the previous version where it asked you if you had a hull, uh, that doesn't go through that at this stage here. We'll find out where we can still access that information if you like. And so what you see now here is much smaller controls here for the left thumb and the right thumb. And that, that leaves way to be able to use the camera on either the FPV camera on your drone or the one on your tablet there. So that'll, that'll take up most of the space there if that's what you're going to do. So you'll see also that we now have the takeoff button up the top there and of course that changes to the landing button when, when it is in air and our throw option is down the bottom here. So if you tap on that one the propellers will start but it won't take off until it's thrown. We also have down the bottom left hand side now these are our options for flipping. So the flipping forward backward left and right. And so once you tap on any one of those and then you double tap in the center of the screen, you're going to flip the drone there. So we can take photos with the, the camera down that bottom right hand side. Now I also want to go in to have a look at some of the things that have changed in terms of the settings. So if we go to the upper left hand side to start with, this takes us back to the main area of the drone where we can change some things if we need to. So for example, if we want to go in and we can see that it's connected and we want to know which drone it's connected to, we can just tap on this one here, which also tells us, of course, what the battery level. So we can see that it's called SheMaps 10 and this is now also the location where we change the name of the drone if that's what you'd like to do. So you've got the little editing pencil next to the name of the drone there. So if you just tap on that and you can change that name. You'll also see the software version. So this is the firmware update. So this particular one, I have the latest firmware update on it, 3026. Now, if we pop back from that screen there, you can also go into the settings mode. Now, this is where we can change a bunch of different settings that that you might want to do if you're thinking about any particular safety aspect or the way you fly your drone. So when we, when we start looking at this, we look at the piloting tab here and you can see that I've got it in the normal mode and you can change that to drift or racing. Now what that's going to do is, is change the effect of how the drone flies. In the normal mode, this is the safest way to get your students flying. So this is where it uses the sensors on the drone to keep it stable in flight. If we change it to the drift mode, for example, basically what happens is the drone keeps its altitude, but if there's any breeze or anything like that, it's going to move side to side. So you lose a, a little bit of, of that stability in the drone, but the upshot of that is that it goes faster. And then when you move to the racing, this is if, if you're interested in, in drone racing, so it doesn't hold the altitude or the X, Y, but the drone has the ability to go very fast. So we just stick with normal for our programs and that, that's the best way I find to build confidence in the way the students are using the drones. Now you might also like to go into position and modify the maximum altitude that you allow those drones to fly to. So I usually keep that somewhere between two and three meters. But um, I, th I think the default when the, when the drones come, I think it's about 10 meters, but you probably want to want to drop that down. Now the flat trim option is really just if you if you get an error or you have a major crash and that just allows the drone to recalibrate itself. Now if you are working with FPV goggles you've got some options there to, to change and you can also look at the camera 
there as well. And and so that's that's if you you've actually got that extra camera placed on top of the drone. And now new to this app is the streaming option. So if you have a Facebook or YouTube account that you would like to stream your flights to, you can go ahead and do that. The only other thing I just uh, should mention in the, in the piloting option there is that it now defaults to saying that there's no hull. So if you are flying with prop guards on your drone, you probably want to change that to a yes. And this other one is, is a really good safety feature. So the cutout option is if the drone prop guards or any part of the drone hit something, then the motors will cut out. So it's not going to keep moving the propellers, which obviously then can cause damage to people or property as well. So they're just some safety features you may want to check out. So if we go back out now to that main area, this area is also where you can retrieve the photos that you've taken from your drone. Either you've taken them in Free Flight Mini or perhaps you've taken them as, as part of an activity in Tinker, for example. So we can go into the gallery there and that's just going to load up some thumbnails of what we see on the drone there. And if you've got a lot of photos on the drone, it can take quite a while to, to bring those thumbnails up. So I do recommend if you've been using the drones for a while, the best way to actually pull those photos off the drone is to use your USB cable to plug it directly into the computer and then you can access the media folder that way and then delete off all the excess photos. So you can see that I've got a number of photos here that I have I've taken at some point in time with the camera in the belly of the drone and the easiest way to download these is you see in the bottom right hand corner of the thumbnail you can just tap on that that's going to download the image for you and it's going to go straight into the photo gallery of your tablet so it doesn't matter ta which tablet or phone you're using it's going to go straight into that gallery so once that's downloaded we'll go into the gallery and check that out as well all right, so we can see it's downloaded effectively. So let's go back in and check out the gallery here. And you'll see we've got a little folder here and now there's two pictures in there, one which I downloaded earlier and the one that I downloaded just then. So this is a really good opportunity now to go in and have a look at the full resolution of that photo. Now bearing in mind, they're, they're not massive, massive photos. So they're 640 by 480 pixels. So the resolution isn't the greatest you're ever going to get, but it, I think it actually is quite amazing for the size of the drone. And then when you look at that, and this, this has been taken uh, over a satellite image mat. So it actually looks like this little drone has been flying somewhere out in the environment there. So that's my quick take of the new Free Flight Mini app. I hope you enjoy working with it and, and let us know if you find out other bits and pieces that, that, are, that are really good about it or any other challenges that you find as well.